So the third and final question which I was going to address of the top uh, three liked questions was from Jerome who asked, since data transport networks are becoming faster, can we imagine a decentralized supercomputer in the future? Well, that's a very good question. Now, there was a lot of interest, uh, and someone, someone below has mentioned uh, here, has mentioned grid computing. So there was a lot of interest um, 10, 15 years ago, um, early 2000s, about grid computing. And it had two major focuses. One was grid computing for, um, for distributed supercomputing. And I'll come back to the point that Suresh mentions here that maybe the, the bandwidth and latency aren't up to scratch for that. But also there was a lot of effort using grid computing for, for analyzing data, for data storage and analysis. Now it's actually the data side which has really taken off. And as you, you, some people argue that, that the cloud computing has come from grid computing, but it's really, that was the success of using distributed data storage and distributed data analysis, uh, that, that became successful. What's much harder is is grid computing as distributed supercomputing. There's a number of issues with it. Well, one is the obvious. Sorry, the, the the one that Suresh mentions here is that you know we on our, something like Archer we have networks which have bandwidths of tens of gigabytes a second and latencies of, of microseconds, and so that's simply not uh, possible at the moment across a distributed network. Um, so you. you any any tightly coupled calculation is going to suffer um, a lot and have very large serial component going to suffer very heavily from Amdahl's law it's not going to scale very well um, but even if you do have a calculation which doesn't doesn't require a lot of communication can be distributed quite well as I mentioned with the MPI model one of the fundamental uh, assumptions of MPI the way it works is that is that the machine is 100% reliable it's not really fault tolerant and that is an issue because one of the other issues about, about distributed computing is, is that things happen, things go up and down. Different machines, the more machines you have, the more likely there's gonna, one's gonna, gonna go offline or have maintenance or something that you're not, not prepared for. And so the, the, the models we have for parallel programming um, of MPI, current models of MPI don't really suit themselves. You can do it, people did in, you know, in the early days of grid computing, people looked at running MPI jobs across machines in, the UK, the US and Japan at once. And you can do it, but it's kind of a Herculean effort to get it working. You suffer from these bandwidth latency issues, these bandwidth latency issues, but it's very hard to do that in general because you, you run into all these issues of, of, of fault tolerance. Now, if you believe that to tackle the exascale challenge, we're going to have to develop fault tolerant um, programming methods because exascale computers are so big that they might develop faults at quite a rapid rate, then maybe those technologies will actually be applicable to, to more wide area grid computing. Um, but actually, um, the, the, um, the fact that even if networks got faster, there would still be this issue of, of dealing with fault tolerance and our current models don't really don't really cope with that in a particular our current models for supercomputing apologies don't cope with that very well other other areas cloud computing you know they're they're, um, they're really that they're, they're designed for that they understand this is for built in the resources are temporary they come and go they're dynamic but that's not the the current supercomputing model in terms of computational science it is a very very good question uh, it was looked at a lot 10 15 years ago and was found not to be particularly useful it was called a meta computing in those days um, but I don't know, new ideas come around that if we do get robust, easy to use, fault tolerant programming models for supercomputing, maybe a side effect will be that we can we can have decentralized supercomputers. I don't know, but it's a very interesting question and I hope I've given you some food for thought there.